Hi, welcome. Today we're going to take a look at using the SkySight SKU T diagram and the cursor function for it to get information on how our thermal is going to look for the soaring day. First, I'm going to select the point SKU T option. And so we're going to pick a point where we want to do the analysis for the SKU T. Not necessarily over the airport. So let's go over here. I'm going to pick this point right here. It brings up the SKU T. And then we can select the day and the time that we're interested in. So we'll just stay with this date and the current time. And as you recall, on the diagram, uh, there are the three lines. The green line is the dew point. The red line is the temperature. And the blue line is the wind velocity, all in the static atmosphere. And then our cursor here draws a couple other lines. And the dark, the solid gray line is the mixing rate or the change in the dew point within a rising air. And the dashed red line is the lapse rate of the temperature of the air within the thermal. So assuming that your thermal is going to start with air that has the same humidity as the surrounding air, we're going to take and start by putting the solid gray line at the dew point on the surface for where we're going to go. If you think that it's going to be coming off a different humidity, for example, off a, a farm with uh, that's been watered, you, you can change the dew point accordingly to reflect more or less uh, humidity. And then we're going to move the cursor so that the dashed red line shows a temperature that we think the thermal will trigger at. So this may depend on whether you think it's going to heat up the air a lot on a big black parking lot or, you know, a, a less significant heating area like a dirt field or some rocks that are facing into the hill or facing into the sun or whether the sun is directly overhead or, you know, it's kind of a fall or spring day and the sun is not as intense. So you can kind of take a guess for yourself how much it, it's going to be. In this case, we see that the ground temperature is forecast to be 60 degrees. I'm going to pick a temperature of about 75 degrees here. So it's got about a seven degree uh, temperature difference. And we can see that the thermal has a difference between the surrounding air and uh, somewhere above uh, the 700 millibar point. The difference between the thermal and the surrounding air starts to decrease significantly. So, and then they come together at an altitude right down here. We can see over on the left, it's about 11,800 feet. Of course, we need about three or four degrees of temperature difference to have enough weight or have enough buoyancy to support the glider. So uh, we certainly won't be able to get up to that altitude. We'll only be able to climb in the thermal you know, in this case, up to the, about the 700 millibar point or about 10,000 feet. <clears throat> if we change the day, let's go to a, a slightly different day. Here's one with a fairly strong inversion. And we can see that even with a, a 61 degree ground temperature, um, it's going to hit the inversion level uh, somewhere around 8,200 feet uh, there. If the air is moist enough and the thermal is warm enough, I'm just going to assume that the dew point here is about 50 and the thermal temperature is at 68. We can see the dashed red line takes a turn to the right. So below uh, the altitude of that turn, it the Thermal follows the dry adiabat, and if it hits the dew point or very near to it, a, a cloud forms, and that we see the moist adiabat, which is the, the red line picking us a uh, more vertical uh, trajectory. That's where the cloud will form, and that's the lapse rate within the condensed uh, moisture of the cloud that the thermal will then cool off at. And so we see in this case, if this was the if this was the situation where the air was humid enough to be 50, that the cloud would continue up to almost the 200 millibar point. So we're talking something in the high 30,000s 
uh, of feet uh, that that cloud could potentially climb to. So you can move around, uh, choose different days and different times, and you can see the skew t uh, conditions change, and you can guess what the thermal will, will go, will trigger off at and how high your thermal could potentially go, and if clouds could potentially form. Be sure to play with that and uh, test your, uh, your knowledge with, uh, with what looks like outside and how the soaring day goes, and you'll be more proficient in being able to predict whether it's gonna be a good soaring day or a not so good soaring day. Thanks for watching.